What's going on YouTube? Chris here with Project Option, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about Gamma, which is one of the four primary option Greeks. The option Greeks help us understand how our option positions are expected to change or perform based on changes in specific environmental factors, such as changes in the stock price, passage of time, and changes in implied volatility. In today's video, we're gonna be focusing on Gamma, and Gamma is an option Greek that tells us how an option's delta is expected to change as the stock price moves. I just did a video explaining option delta in detail, so if you have not seen that video yet, this video is not going to make any sense whatsoever, so I would suggest watching my video on option delta first, and then coming right back to this video so that everything in this video makes more sense. You can find the video on option delta up in the corner up here, or in the link down below, and as I said, I would recommend watching that video before diving into this one. While an options delta tells us how much the options price is expected to change based on a $1 change in the stock price, the option Greek gamma actually tells us how much the options delta is expected to change with that same $1 change in the stock price. I know this is confusing, so let's go through a bunch of examples, and by the end of this video, you're going to be very comfortable with what gamma represents, as I'm going to walk through numerous examples to demonstrate each of the concepts that I'm about to discuss. In this table, we're looking at different options with different delta and gamma values. On the right hand most column, we can see the expected option deltas with a $1 increase in the stock price, as well as a $1 decrease in the stock price. For example, if we're looking at a call option with an initial delta of 0.50 and a gamma of 0.05, we can see that if the stock price increases by $1, that call options delta is expected to be 0.55, and with a $1 decrease in the stock price, that options delta is expected to be 0.45. So the options delta is expected to change by the amount of gamma, and in this case, the gamma when this option's starting out is 0.05, which means with a $1 change up or down in the stock price, the options delta is expected to change by the amount of gamma, which is 0.05 in this scenario. If we're looking at a put option with an initial delta value of negative 0.35 and a gamma value of 0.03, then if the stock price increases by $1, then that put option's delta is expected to change to negative 0.32. On the other hand, if the stock price decreases by $1, that put option's delta is expected to change to negative 0.38. So in this scenario, the put options delta is expected to change, again, by the amount of its gamma, which is 0.03 in this scenario. From this table, we can learn that an options expected delta value after a $1 increase in the stock price is equal to the starting option delta plus the option gamma. On the other hand, to calculate an options expected delta after a $1 decrease in the stock price, we take the starting option delta and we subtract the options gamma from that value to get the options expected delta value after a $1 decrease in the stock price. Because call options have positive deltas and positive gamma, call option deltas will increase and get closer to positive one as the stock price increases, and they will get closer to zero, meaning they will fall as the stock price decreases. Now, since put options have negative deltas and positive gamma, the opposite is true for put options. As the stock price increases, a put options delta is actually going to get less negative, meaning the options delta is going to get closer to zero. And as the stock price falls, the put options delta is going to get more and more negative, approaching negative one. And that means that as the stock price falls, put option deltas will fall to more negative values and get closer to negative one. Later on, I'm going to explain how we can understand this intuitively because it does make sense from a probabilistic standpoint, but for now, just keep these formulas in mind. Here is a diagram that helps illustrate this fact about the changes in option deltas as the stock price increases and decreases. All option deltas increase after an increase in the stock price and decrease after a decrease in the stock price, but since put options have negative deltas, adding gamma to the negative put deltas means the put deltas actually get closer to zero, meaning their prices get less sensitive to future stock price movements as the stock price increases. The opposite is true for call options. Call option deltas grow towards 1.0, 
as the stock price increases, which means their prices get more and more sensitive to future stock price movements as the share price rises. Let's go ahead and look at some historical examples of put option deltas and call option deltas as the stock price is changing over time so that you can visually see what I've just described in this past section. In this first example, we will look at changes in a call option and a put option at the exact same stock price on Apple as Apple's stock price is changing over time. The top half of the chart shows the change in the stock price and the strike price of the options in this example, and the strike price of the call and put in this example is $120. The bottom half of this chart shows the change in the deltas of the 120 call and 120 put as Apple's share price fluctuates over time. As we can see here, Apple's share price is falling throughout the entire period. At the beginning of the period, Apple was at $130 and fell to $105 by the end of the period, which means the 120 call started in the money and ended out of the money by the time it expired. The 120 put started out of the money and ended in the money by the time of the end of the period, which means the option expired in the money. As explained earlier, a decrease in the stock price will lead to a decrease in the call delta and put deltas, which means the call delta will move towards zero and the put delta will move towards negative 1.0. What this means is that in this example, the call options price got less sensitive to changes in the stock price over time because the calls delta was shrinking, meaning it was getting closer and closer to zero, while the put options price got more sensitive to changes in the stock price because the put delta was becoming more significantly negative as the stock price fell. But how can we understand these changes in an options delta intuitively? In the option delta video that I mentioned before and that is linked in the description below, I stated that an options delta is used as an estimation for the probability of that option expiring in the money. For example, if we're looking at a call option with a delta of 0.55, that call option has an estimated probability of 55% of expiring in the money. On the other hand, if we're looking at a put option with a delta of negative 0.35, that put option has an estimated 35% chance of expiring in the money. Now, since gamma estimates how much an option's delta is expected to change with a $1 movement in the stock price, gamma essentially tells us the change in the option's probability of expiring in the money as the stock price changes. Let me say that one more time. Gamma estimates the change in an option's estimated probability of expiring in the money as the stock price changes. Let's look at the previous Apple example from before and understand what I've just said by visualizing the changes in the call delta and the put delta as Apple's stock price changes over time. At first, Apple is at $130 and we are looking at a call and put with a strike price of $120. Since the call option is $10 in the money at the beginning of the period, it makes sense that the delta of the option is 0.75, indicating a 75% probability of being in the money at expiration. The stock price can fall $10 and the 120 call will still be in the money at expiration. On the other hand, the 120 put is $10 out of the money at the beginning of the period, meaning the stock price needs to fall more than $10 for the 120 put to be in the money at expiration. It makes sense then that the put options delta is negative 0.25, indicating a 25% estimated probability of being in the money at expiration. As the stock price falls, we can see that the call's delta falls from 0.75 and moves closer to zero, indicating a lower probability of expiring in the money at expiration, while the put options delta falls from negative 0.25 to a value closer to negative one, indicating a higher probability of expiring in the money. In the final days of the chart, the call's delta is right around zero, while the put's delta is right around negative 1.0, which indicates an estimated 0% probability of the call expiring in the money and an estimated 100% probability of the put expiring in the money. These values should make sense because with one or two days left until expiration, the call is 10 to $15 out of the money and the put is 10 to $15 in the money which means the stock price would need to experience a very large increase in a short period of time for the call option to become in the money and for the put option to become out of the money. Probabilistically speaking, these changes are not likely and therefore these options have a very high probability of expiring out of the money and in the money respectively. These changes make sense because as a stock price increases, 
Call options at every single strike price have a higher probability of expiring in the money, while put options at every single strike price have a lower probability of expiring in the money. Now the opposite is true when the stock price falls. When the stock price falls, call options at every single strike price have a lower probability of expiring in the money, while put options at every single strike price have a higher probability of expiring in the money, which explains why as a stock price falls, call option deltas will get closer to zero, while put option deltas will get closer to negative one. Moving on, let's talk about gamma risk. You may have heard option traders sometimes refer to gamma risk, and gamma risk essentially refers to the increase in an option position's sensitivity relative to changes in the stock price as the stock price changes and as time passes. If you own a call option with a delta of 0.50 and the stock price falls by $1, your call option is expected to lose 50 cents of value, which actually means that your position is expected to lose $50 in value when accounting for the option contract multiplier of 100. Now later on in the trade, if your call options delta has increased to 0.85, if the stock price falls by $1, now your call option is expected to lose 85 cents of value, which means that you are expected to lose $85 in your position if you own that call option because you have to account for the option contract multiplier of 100. Gamma risk refers to the increase in an option or an option position's delta value or sensitivity to changes in the stock price as the stock price changes or as time passes. A larger and larger delta value of your option position means that as the stock price changes, your position is going to experience larger and larger price fluctuations or P&L fluctuations. And generally speaking, as an options trader, or especially as someone who sells an option, you typically do not want wild swings in the profitability of your position. The options with the highest amount of gamma are options with strike prices near the stock price and options with very little time until expiration while also having strike prices near the stock price. In this chart, we are looking at the gamma values of call and put options at various strike prices, but with the same amount of time until expiration. As we can see here, the options with strike prices close to the stock price have the highest gamma values, meaning they have the most delta sensitivity relative to changes in the stock price. In this chart, we're looking at options at various strike prices and also with various amounts of time until expiration. As we can see, and as I just stated, options with less time until expiration have more significant gamma values, particularly the options with strike prices close to the stock price. What this means is that if you are trading options with strike prices near the stock price, the delta values will change more rapidly than in the money or out of the money options when the stock price does change. Those delta changes will be more significant if the options have less time until expiration. What this means is that if you're trading options with less and less time until expiration, and especially if those options have strike prices near the stock price, the gamma of those positions is going to increase rapidly as expiration approaches, and that means that if the stock price changes, your option position is going to experience more and more significant swings in its value as the stock price fluctuates. In short, positions with larger and larger gamma values are susceptible to wild swings in the P&L. And as I mentioned earlier, most of the time you do not want to see violent swings in the P&L of your positions. We can visualize this concept by looking at the following chart. In this chart, we are looking at changes in the Netflix stock price relative to changes in the 120 puts delta and gamma as time passes. In the shaded region at the end of the period, we can see that the 120 put is at the money because Netflix's share price is around $120. The gamma of the 120 put is growing more and more as the option approaches expiration, and we can see wild swings in the puts delta in those final days before expiration. Do you really need to worry about gamma risk or is it somewhat of a topic that is a little bit exaggerated? In my opinion, if you are trading short-term options, then gamma risk is going to be a real threat to you as I've just described that if you are trading options with very little time until expiration and those options have strike prices near the stock price, then as the stock price changes, the value of your option position is going to experience significant changes and if the stock price moves against you, Obviously, that's not going to be a good thing because the losses can stack up fairly quickly. But if you're someone who closes your option positions with a few weeks left before they expire and you're never holding options close to expiration, then you really don't have to worry about the gamma risk that options traders are talking about. But at the end of the day, if the stock price moves against you, you are going to experience changes in the P&L of your position. 
but not as much as you would if you were trading short-term options and those options had strike prices near the stock price. If you have any questions or comments about this video, please leave a comment down below as I will get back to you as soon as I can and I would love to hear from you. I hope you found this video to be helpful and now you are more confident with your understanding of an options gamma, which is one of the four primary option Greeks. I'm Chris from Project Option and I will see you in the next video.